Hello, I'm Marcus Antebi, and welcome to Germ My Phobe. <laughs> this is a podcast which we're going to talk about every subject in the known universe. It's going to take some time. Today's the first episode. I have a fantastic, wonderful guest with me, the beautiful Teresa Antebi, formerly Teresa Lorenko. She's now carrying the Antebi name. Welcome, Teresa. Thank you. Thanks for coming here on uh, last uh, short notice. Yeah, this was quite a surprise. So um, I was told that right before the show, around the corner, we're on East 6th Street in New York City, I was told that right before the show that you went for a colonic at the famous Gravity East place, which essentially is a place where they take a stainless steel, clean <laughs> little contraption, and they gently insert it into your anus and rectum, and then they use water in a tank at a higher level and it's gravity system and you're basically flushing out the colon for 40 minutes. How was that? Tell us a little bit about that. I like to flush my waist out. How was it for you? I mean, you were there as well. I was in a different <laughs> room, but I, you're my guest, it so I really wanted amazing. to have your take it's, on it. It's one of my things that I like to do once a month. It's, you know, it's cleansing and then I like to have my juices, which right now I'm having a lucky seven. So it's springtime right now, so I am going on a little liquid cleanse. Well, that's really very odd. <laughs> Why is that odd? Well, I mean, people generally don't do that. It's a very, I'd say that you're in the like super one millionth of a percent of people that, that uh, you know, clean the furnace or have, you know, the fireplace cleaned on a regular basis. And so what do you think, what do you feel the benefits of colonics are? And let's not get stuck on colonics. That's really probably the worst subject to do a podcast on. But just just quickly, just to, as a warm-up, what, what do you feel the benefits of colonics are? I mean, for me personally, I probably don't need it as often because I'm pretty much on a raw food diet and I drink a lot of juices and just all plant-based foods. But for someone that's not on a raw diet or not on a vegan diet and is probably constipated, it's helpful to get things moving. I don't have those problems because I'm always moving. Now you say that, you know, with all due respect, you say that a little bit snobby. Like, I don't have that problem. Is there well, because sort I'm of, eating plants. Well, when I'm you're just, eating I'm plants, there's so much fiber. Is there a competitive uh, attitude in the uh, raw food health industry? People that are regular and go to the bathroom, they kind of like wear that I'm, like a I flag? I mean, I'm not, I'm not saying it's competitive, but when you're eating plants, you're consuming a lot of fiber. And if you're eating breads and white rice and, you know, just pure processed How foods. about the uh, white rice that's dyed yellow at the uh, the Dominican place around the corner from here? It's the same thing. It's white rice, it's processed, and it's going to stick on your colon, and it's going to give you a hard time to now, get Now, if this out. was a show about colonics, I would challenge some of these <laughs> thoughts the way you're saying it. I don't think they're super uh, like scientific approach, but I think the general spirit is there. So um, you're, you, you also, I want to pull extract something from what you said. You said you're mostly raw. Mm -hmm. which is very generalized. When you say mostly, are you talking about like if you averaged out your weekly diet? I can give you a percentage. I eat pretty much, I mean, depending on the weather. If it's warm, I eat only raw foods. But in the wintertime, I like to have some cooked vegetables. Yeah. Oh, you're so decadent. <laughs> oh, my God. I, mean, it's cold. I had no idea it's, you were that kind of woman. It's hard to just live off just raw foods in the winter when it's freezing cold outside. But throughout the day, I mean, I drink, you watch my diet. I have juices throughout the day. I have my smoothies, and then I'll have a huge salad in the evening. I would say that <clears throat> you have a very healthy diet. You're, you're extremely conscientious about all the aspects of diet. I see that you pray over the food. Mm -hmm. uh, you massage the salads that you make. You talk to your food. You like to pick the vegetables yourself from um, the garden, the garden of Whole Foods. <laughs> um, if I had a garden, I would pick it myself, which I do in the Caribbean. That's the only place where I can kick, pick my own fruits and vegetables. But here, we don't have... Well, how have... long have you been on this path? On the vegan path? The path, the Jedi path, I don't know, whatever path that you're on. This path, the colonics okay. Well, juice. It's, okay, the, okay, let's go way back to when I was wait, a kid. Wait, can I ask, wait, yeah. let me step back one second. Admittedly, you would consider yourself a germaphobe. Oh, yeah, definitely. Okay, and the owner of the studio, Ralph, I think he is at a higher level of germaphobia. Higher than me? Much higher. What? The guy, the guy <laughs> walks around with two spray cans of Lysol with him. He hits everything on a constant basis. Well, Lysol is a little harsh, though. That's hard. That's like... 
a lot of chemicals to breathe in. Yeah, I think it was invented by DuPont. They, they, they do have they, something. They, they, they figured out when they were dropping napalm during the Vietnam War that it had a nice fresh scent to it. They took some of the derivative chemicals and they made it into a household disinfectant. They do have That's one from... That's not true, but I, I made that up. I'm sorry. May I just interrupt? Yes, go ahead. Seven Generation has a natural one, so when you're inhaling it, because if you're spraying that stuff, it's really not that good to inhale it. It's kind of toxic for the body. It's terrible. It's really bad, it's yeah. It's terrible. Um, so, we were, so, okay, so your diet has been very clean, and would you, would you say that your diet started to uh, clean up as a necessity from when you were in your 20s and in your teens and you were a model and you oh, had yeah. to fast and starve yourself to... Hands down. I mean, my diet definitely cleaned up. When I, I discovered the raw food diet when I was 20 and prior to that, I was pretty much anorexic, starving myself. Not literally anorexic, but some people might consider it anorexic if you're just you having... a little closer to the microphone? An apple a day, which is really unhealthy for a 16, 17-year-old girl to just consume an apple a day. All right, so let, wait, 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 let's let's make sure we flesh out this thing because mm-hmm. you glossed over something too easily. You said that in the beginning, your journey began on the far end of the spectrum is that you had what you would call anorexia. I think you would consider that anorexia if you're just eating an apple a day, right? Well, I would say that there has to be some several components. One is you were... You, would you class? Would you say that during those years when you had to be a certain body type, that you had an obsession? I definitely had an obsession, and I didn't really have problems with my. I mean, I was always very lean and very slim built. I think it was just yeah. It's just I just think in that industry, you're watching all the other girls; they're all doing it. So you're like, oh, I'm 16 years old, so I'm like, oh, I guess I have to do this well, you too. You wanted to show rib. <laughs> You wanted to show rib back. In I was those days, showing. I was showing enough was rib naturally. Than a bony pair of knees. Um, so, so you had the anorexia. Do, were you also finding yourself doing some binge eating and then and then purging? So I will. I'll explain how the binge eating happened. So that happened from pretty much starving yourself. You're doing fashion week and you're just eating an apple a day or like having a protein, like three protein bars um, for a month straight and you go back home to your family and everyone's just eating everything and you binge eat and then you feel like crap and throw up. <laughs> so, okay, we don't but, have to but get I'm, I'm not super saying, graphic. I don't want to make fun I of mean, that. But no, I'm not. I mean, a lot of women struggle with this. I don't struggle with this, well, thankfully. Just, I don't struggle for, with this anymore. Just for clarity, anymore, so, so you would induce vomiting. I would induce vomiting. It, this was not on a daily basis. This was... Just when time needed. Time to time when needed. When needed. We'll like touch up. Yeah. Ralph Lauren was in town. <laughs> Karl Lagerfeld. Got to drop a couple of and let's, ounces. Let's just put it in there. I was a kid. I was a teenager. I had. I didn't honor my body the way I honor my body right now. You know, I'm 38 years old now. I have. I love my body. I respect my body. I would not do any harm to my body and I, at this and age. And I can attest that. I would. I would say that that. Given your circumstances, being in that industry, which is extremely competitive and very hostile towards body types, and people are constantly being rejecting, and there's a lot at stake, money and self-esteem and fame goes into the picture, but answer me the honest question, Mm -hmm. when would you say the last time you did a, um, a, the, the bulimia portion, when was, when, when, when would you say the last time you did that was? I've slipped up once, I think about two years ago. It was a one-time thing. Okay, so it's important. So I, I would say that from my observation of you is that you, um, what you've managed to do is make a beautiful transformation of something that was highly motivated by vanity and you know obsession and self-esteem. You made it. You you turn that. This is helpful for a lot of people who might be in this position. Is you turn that. On willpower alone, you said, well, if I'm going to eat light and minimal calories, I'm going to eat super clean. Mm -hmm. And you, at some point in your career... Well, I was going to go back to that, how I got to the raw food diet. So tell us about that. So um, I was having those binging things when I was, I think, about 18 years old, but my mom caught it. So she pulled me out of it really fast. And when I was 20, I came across... a raw. My girlfriend told me about this raw food restaurant, which was back then called Quintessence. And we went there and we had lunch and 
I was like, oh, this food is so good. It's all raw. I couldn't believe it was just veg- like vegetable based, nut based and not cooked and, and just so healthy and so alive. So I started researching and reading books about the raw food diet. And it made a lot of sense to me at the time. I was 20 years old. Um, and I just dove right into it, like cold turkey. I'm going to be a raw foodist now. And I was able to eat a lot of food and not and keep my body the way I wanted to keep it and be healthy. And I had you know, glowing skin and, you know, not constipated and not bloated and just healthy. So I stuck with it. And it, and it certainly probably made your life more manageable. Yeah, definitely. So today you would say that, I would still say that knowing your diet as well as I do, I would say that you're very, very conscious of the quality of the food that you consume on Yes. A whole spectrum of things, including... I like organic food. Yeah. I prefer if it's from the farm directly, but, you know, it's we don't have that access all the time. Right. So what are your decadent moments with food today? What's a cheat for you? <laughs> What's a cheat for me? Yeah. A raw chocolate. <laughs> wow. Wow. <laughs> a raw chocolate or a raw, a raw pie. Right. Oh, you know what was a cheat? What? A cheat was what we had last night. Those chicken, those fake chicken oh, thingies. Had, that was had, definitely um, a cheat. Some type of uh, wheat gluten. See, that was protein. That was processed food, which I don't. China, I don't like to have, and attached that was to a, a cheat. Fake drumstick, <laughs> and it looked like and a it chicken. Looks like a piece of chicken. They put barbecue sauce on and a lot of salt, and it is kind of irresistible. I definitely felt the con- the consequence of eating just one of them last night. Yeah. Um, I I felt it too, but then I had a colonic today, so oh wow, I flushed okay. it all out. That was a very expensive meal. Not only did it cost us twenty five dollars for that meal per person, but it cost us one hundred and twenty five dollars to flush it out. It cost you twenty five. My plate wasn't wasn't that much. Oh, My plate was. Okay. I had kale salad and one your piece plate, of your and cheap one plate, <laughs> seven dollars. Mean. All right, so I want to just uh, move the subject for a second because we definitely could make this about. Uh, eating disorders, I want to just validate one thing and say that I think that a lot of people have mysterious types of eating disorders. Um, I know that an eating disorder that I've uh, written about is just the disorder of not knowing how to identify healthy food Mm -hmm. and not making healthy food a top priority in the day. You know, um, that's definitely a disorder because it causes so many problems, not just emotional problems, but physical problems, and I think that uh, it's a long process to become conscious. One of the things that was missing for me when I was in my 20s was I didn't know how to find good teachers, and I wasn't the type of person who was going to read a diet. See, that was me. I didn't have teachers. I just read books. Right. I read a lot of books. I I didn't have the motivation that you had. If somebody was offering me $600,000 to wear a certain clothing, I probably would have yeah, definitely been had the a lot motivation. faster <laughs> to uh, evolve my diet. My diet, when I was 15, was off the charts. I was headed towards being a 500-pound human being. And I don't say that in a disparaging way. It wouldn't have fit me and my lifestyle, but I was just I would eat four dinners. And, it, and if I went to like a place like Denny's, I'd have like four plates if I was hungry. I would just order four things. See, I only do one meal a day <clears> and... Well, I could. I did one meal per ten minutes. But I do count my smoothie as a meal, so it's not one meal. I mean, like a meal where I'm. It's not liquefied during the day. I do the liquids. I do the smoothies and the juices, and then before the sun goes down, I like to have my my salad, which I have to chew. <laughs> and, and also, I would say that what you also did in the last few years is you continued your journey with food by becoming really, really immersed in the yoga uh, practice. Mm -hmm. And I think, um, I want to say this in a non-judgy way, but unlike most people I know in yoga, you're really living the full lifestyle, which includes um, hygiene and and diet. And I would say that I know from my own experience that if you're keeping a certain type of diet, it is impossible to get into certain postures. Well, that's all, that's a main, that's why I, that's another reason now why I don't really eat that much because when I eat a huge meal before I practice, it's 
I'm completely distracted and I have a hard time getting into a lot of the postures and I'm just distracted. It's like my my body is just focusing on digesting the food. So I, I me per in comparison to you, you can do an evening class. I like to get my class out the way where I don't have a lot of food in my system and I get more out of my yoga practice. Well, I trained myself when I was fighting Thai boxing. I could I could train if I drank um, a can of paint. It wouldn't make a difference. So it was just see. I'm not like that. I don't. You know but I'll be that honest I'm super with you. Sensitive. I don't enjoy. <laughs> I don't enjoy a yoga class if I feel full or if you know. I, I there's a perfect there's a perfect physical sensation where it's where it's not hungry and you don't feel weak. But also I mean, I don't want to. I I don't want to be weak. Which I mean, you watch me and my husband, so you see that I hey, do wait have. A <laughs> I do have my smoothie three hours prior to the class, so I'm not completely empty, but it's I've given my body enough time to digest that smoothie so that when I do practice, I, I'm i ready to focus on my practice and my body's just not consuming all the energy to digest the food that I just so, consumed. And, and what is the main uh, purpose of your focus? What's the main purpose? Like in other words, why do you need to be in such a physical state in order for you to practice your yoga postures? Well, for me, practicing yoga, it's helping me to quiet my mind down so I don't have too much craziness going on in my mind. And it's helping me to, at, what, at some point, to just be able to sit and meditate so it goes and go the physical more. physical for you? Yeah, of course. I mean, that's the beginning for me. The physical part is the first step for me. 